Hello, hi. I've been thinking about this moment for so long, and I've been actually lacking sleep for this moment for so long. And honestly, today, I'm gonna, I've been thinking how to start this speech, and I wanted to know what to say, what not to say. But I wanted to share with you and start over from scratch with a fact uh, that I want, wanted to share with you. And the fact is, I have no idea how on earth I made it on this stage. When the TED teams called me to be one of this year's speakers, I thought it was an April Fool's joke. But nope, here we are, as real as it can be. And I wanted to know at first, before coming on the stage, what made me come today? Is it the yogi in me? Is it the business owner in me? Or is it the salesperson in me? Maybe all of them, in fact. But one thing is sure is, I wouldn't have been able to make it today, to be on stage in front of you today, if it wasn't thanks to the mindset. Mindset is actually the basis of everything. You hear about this a lot, so mindset is the basis of everything. But everything is also created by the mindset, and everything is ruled by the mindset. And the power of the mind is something that we need to really take seriously, because believe it or not, if we don't master it, it masters us. And the mindset can be split in two. Explained very briefly, you have the fixed mindset and you have the growth mindset. The fixed mindset is believing that we are born as humans with a set of ability and a set of skills that we cannot grow and we cannot improve and we cannot actually have more skills throughout our lives. However, the growth mindset means that through effort and hard work, we can improve in any area of our lives and we can have any skills that we want. So these two different beliefs lead to two different behaviors and to do two different results. But what it also causes is us to react differently in terms of difficulties and obstacles in life. A fixed mindset person will actually give up easily, thinking that's not for me, while a growth mindset person will just take, uh, they try to try harder, they tend to really grow and want to learn from any obstacles, and they don't give up that easily. And if you've been suffering from the fixed mindset, as I have been uh, since the 15 first years of my life, the good news is we can shift from the fixed mindset to the growth mindset. It is possible, no matter your age, no matter your history and your background. So hi, my name is Kenza. I am a Moroccan soul. I was born and raised in Casablanca, Morocco. And since I was a kid, I had two dreams. The first one was to travel and to live abroad. And the second was to work for a company so famous that it's known to the most rural parts of the world. I have been able to achieve both by the age of 30. I, uh, for the country, now I'm living in Dublin, Ireland, and this is the fourth country I settled in in the last 10 years. And for the company, it might seem awkward and sound awkward to you, but in the early 90s, internet didn't exist. We didn't have internet. So for me, the first and most famous company I'd go for was McDonald's. But thank God I changed, and obviously I adjusted my aim, and I am happy to be one of the Google uh, team members today. I also graduated in uh, business international uh, business development, so I've been working in the tech world as a sales international manager ever since. Uh, and there's also a health nut inside of me, a business owner. That's why I uh, spoke about the business owner part. Uh, and because I created this brand, because I genuinely believe that a healthy body is the basis of a healthy mind. So I created the brand called Happy Superfoods, and we sell online food supplements online. So that's the first part. And as if my, it wasn't enough, my brain said, hey, we only have 24 hours a day, and we already lack sleep, so why don't we add more? So I promised myself last year that if I could squeeze in and log in 200 hours of yoga practice during one year, and if it actually transforms my life, then I will get the certificate. So I kept my promise, and that's what I did. I uh, became a yoga teacher in uh, January 2022, and that's when I launched uh, Yogi Now, which is an online yoga studio, um, with the mission, the pure mission of uh, helping people tap into their true potential. Knowing me, none of this, none of this would have been possible without the right mindset. And I thought, 
when I shifted from the fixed mindset, I thought there's no way we can have only one narrative and one skill in life. We can have way more. So today, my goal here in front of you is to share with you how to go from the fixed mindset to the growth mindset and share with you three important steps, actionable, that you can put in action even today in any area of your life in order to evolve, to become that person you need to be, to have the life you want to have. So um, now before, I just wanted to do a quick exercise with you guys. I will again ask you, uh, me too, to close your eyes. And I want you to just relax for a second. I want you to relax your shoulders, relax your neck, your jaw, and I want you to breathe in fully. Just play the game. Breathe in fully. And as you exhale, I want you to think about the most extraordinary life you could imagine for yourself. What does that look like? What is the first thing that pops into your mind? Forget about the limits. Forget about the logic. If you could have anything you wanted, if you could be anything you wanted, and if you could do anything you wanted, what would you do? What would you be? What would you have? Now open your eyes. Whatever you saw there is possible, no matter your past, no matter your history, and no matter your background. In fact, I'm going to probably shock some of you, if you saw it, and if that thing was the first thing that popped into your mind, it means it's already yours. You just have to show up as the person you need to be in order to get it. And the second thing, by the way, whatever you saw there, it doesn't have to make sense to anyone, as long as it makes sense to you. Personally, I should have probably went for, I don't know, blockchain as a new career, but go figure, I just go, went for yoga, and I know it doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but for me, yoga makes me grow in ways money cannot, so it makes sense to me. The second part, it's also important to know that it might look overwhelming, it might look a lot because you're sitting here and thinking about something that sounds too far, but your goal is to see it as a puzzle, and you have to break it down into small baby steps, small actionable steps. One leads to the other until you have the bigger picture. And to do all of this, you have to have the right mindset. How do we get the, this right mindset? In order to get it, well, first thing is to really understand and integrate that our brains are built to learn and to grow. In fact, scientists, have um, found that our brains are actually like plastic, so they shrink and they expand, and they can be reshaped over time. And when they're reshaped, they create new neural pathways. And those neural pathways, they're like roots that are easily followed. We call this neuroplasticity. You can use this to your advantage, and you can actually create your own neural pathways that you want. How do we do so? We do it by repetition. The things that you say and do more often become hardwired as the habits in your brain. And your brain thinks, oh, this is a new skill that we have. So what do you have to do? You pick that skill, the lifestyle or the habit you want to implement in your life, and you train yourself over and over and over again until that new thing becomes the new normal. And that's what I did with yoga. Every time when I started yoga, every time, my trip to the mat was a punishment because I was working on coordinating my movements with my breathing, and it was horrible. I, basically, my brain and my body didn't know each other, so I was like, it was overwhelming. But eventually, with time, after years, and even after months, uh, I started craving it when I miss it in the morning. So it's all by practicing over and over again. I wanted to but speak about this first before, before we uh, start our first step here, one of three that I told you about, which is sit and scrap. Looks cool, I just made it up, but it's obviously what we're going to do is observe, and you sit and observe. Many, many years ago, when I was still 15, I was still living in Morocco, and I remember that every summer, I would sit on my balcony, and I would watch my neighbors, French-Moroccan neighbors, would come back every year from France. And I would just sit there and daydream about, wow, what life could be for me on the other side. And I wanted to show you here something very, very personal. This is actually a page from my journal when I was 15, and this is what I wrote, and it still means a lot to me. 
it basically says that it describes why it meant for me to travel, it meant new places, new food, new landscapes, new people, but it also meant something more fundamental, which is a new me. Who was I really as a person if I was able to express myself fully, to be somewhere new? And it also meant to me the need, I understood back then the need that to burst out of the bubble that I was into, because I was uh, being raised in an overprotective society, overprotective environment, overprotective family. So I really needed to go out of that. But the thing is, when I wrote this and when I was thinking about dreaming, about dreaming about traveling, it was as if it was just a dream, as if a dream is just that. We cannot, it's not a doable thing. We just fantasize about it. But then one day I was, I, I sat down with myself and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit and ask myself questions, uh, hard questions, and then find the answer to them. And I ask myself things like, what am I doing? Am I happy? What will make me happy, truly? What will it take for me to go there? Uh, what are the steps? What if I fail? What if I succeed? In all of these questions, what am I capable for, uh, of, and etc. I didn't like all the answers, obviously, but I couldn't lie to myself anymore. I was doing nothing to be happy, yet I was blaming everyone around me for my unhappiness. And the work I was doing there is the sitting, the scrapping, the observation, and the analysis. It's like an inventory. If you want to go from place A to place B, you have to first know yourself. What are the things that triggers you? What are the things that make you happy? What are the things that, what are your habits? And once you know yourself that much, you, you begin to grow your awareness, and you can take the first step very easily. But observation is not enough. Then, once you observe, you need to embrace and to accept. You accept what you found. You make peace with it. And once we accept, we're actually back in control. We're not afraid of ourselves anymore because we know ourselves. We know how we operate. And we're like, okay, facts. I hate cardio. Okay, I am a negative thinker. Okay, I, this or that doesn't serve me in a positive way. And we shift from just observing to accepting and finding new solutions. Again, fun fact, it took me three months. I decided to do yoga teacher training, but it took me three months to actually apply. Why? Because I was, when I sat and I observed myself, I figured that I was afraid, scared. Fear was paralyzing. And I was afraid of um, starting. I was afraid of failing. But I also was afraid of succeeding, because it would mean a new career, a new thing that I have to show up for. And I was scared. But then, I accepted that fact. I found solutions to every fear. And then I was like, OK. I never questioned the decision. With this, I was like, OK, I'm going to do this, and this is how I'm going to reassure myself. And I chose to be kinder to myself. And that will enable you, if you choose something you want to do, really, if you approach it with acceptance, you never question the decision. You will only question your approach to it. That was our second part. Now, before we dive into our third and final part, I want us to speak about something that we often overlook and that we don't speak enough about, which is purpose. As a salesperson, so the salesperson in me will speak now, as a salesperson, I was, uh, in my previous companies, or even as a sales, when I had targets, I would hit at the targets and I would overachieve and I was killing it because I was always trying to uh, break the records and always be the best. And, and that was a meaningless life because I realized I was doing it from uh, the need to show that I can and need to overachieve and need to prove a point that, okay, as a woman and as an immigrant, I can do better and I have to do better. But it, it was meaningless. And honestly, I had the dream, but it tasted bitter. You can have, I, I want to, to insist on something. You can have the best mindset in the world, and you can be smashing it in every area of your life. But if it's not aligned with your purpose, happiness will not follow. The purpose is the why you're doing anything, anything in the life. It has to make sense to you. And most of us actually today just want to get through the day. We just naturally go and take the path of least resistance. We're not challenging ourselves. And as students, I want to address this because I've, I see you and I've been there. There's nothing as draining as to come into classes 
faking it until you make it, barely surviving, really like suffering, and you feel like you're tired even before having started. And now the world that we knew has changed. The world is not the same. The pandemic, the COVID, the whatever happened, all of these now more than ever, all of these made us, like, it, it is urgent to find a meaning to all of this. And those lockdown months, for me, was, were so crucial that I asked myself, like, okay, what am I going to leave behind me when I leave this earth? Like, truly, what am I going to leave that is impactful? And it, it, so some questions are tough to answer, but there is room for everyone. If you're on this earth, if you're still alive, and if you're here, there is something you need to share with the world. You have something, everyone has something, and it is your right and your duty to come and show it your own way. Now you're going to ask me, okay, so how do I find my purpose? Well, I'm going to say something counterintuitive. You don't try to find your purpose, you don't try to figure it out. I love a book called The Rhythm of Life by Matthew Kelly. If you can read it, it's really awesome. Uh, that he describes beautifully that in order to find a purpose, the best way is to be yourself, the best version possible of yourself. By being you, be doing the best you can, by pursuing your dreams in your way and inspiring others to do so, that is your purpose. And it will come naturally to you. Now what I want to do is give you two questions. I hope you remember them, because these two questions uh, will help you narrow down whether you're on the right path in terms of purpose. And to help you know whether it's, it is that or not. The first question is, what is it? What's that thing that you do that makes you forget to eat? And when you find that, I want you to answer the second question. If we give you a million dollars today to stop doing that thing, would you stop? I answered no to teaching yoga, and that's exactly when I applied for the yoga teacher training. So really, if you get, if you got yourself the right mindset plus the purpose, nothing can stop you. You're set for success. Now we dive into our third and final um, phase here. The step that you need to take is action and responsibility. And this is a very, like, this story is very important. I think this is the first time I speak about it out loud. At the end of my second year, after living in Bali for two years, I had appendicitis. I couldn't pronounce this word for the life of me. This is the first time I get it right. So appendicitis is something that bursts out of your intestines. It's a small piece that actually is dangerous, because if you don't take it out in the 24 hours and it bursts out, well, you, you, you did it, basically. And my life went on downhill from that moment on, from, yeah, I live in Bali, life, paradise, whatever, to nightmare. So it, it was like this. Crisis, emergency, surgery. I didn't have insurance. Always get covered. Didn't have insurance. Had to borrow money, a lot of money. It also meant debt. Um, healing process took too long, so it meant that I lost my job there and meant no income because it's Bali. And it also meant that while that was happening, my visa, French visa, because I was Moroccan back then, was expiring. And my Balinese visa was expiring too. Bref, it was downhill, and it was like life told me, hey, welcome back to Ground Zero. And it was tough, and I honestly, and I stayed there in the Ground Zero for a couple of months, with the whole crying in the shower thing and everything. But I heard a quote, and that quote went like this. We are not the victims of our circumstances, we are the creators of them. And I felt outraged, and I felt disrespected, because I was like, uh, I'm going through hell. How can I be the responsible, like the creator of this? I'm not. But it was true, because whatever happened, happened. And by doing nothing about it, I was perpetuating my misery. And I thought, OK, so I've put up a plan, a very detailed plan, on how to get out there and keep on going towards my dreams. So my plan was basically bullet points. It was like, OK, find their product to sell, build my online business, go back to France, find a job, get my visa done, then get my citizenship. And that's exactly what I did. I followed it. Nothing was, was between me and my dream. I had, that was my like, life-saving jacket. And yeah, that was honestly the toughest climb out. Uh, I cried and I prayed and I worked hard and I prayed even harder and I worked even harder. But it's worth it. Action is so worth it. 
because at the end of the day, you know, I still wonder what my life would have looked like if I kept on sobbing back in that shower. And the link here, I just want you to understand there's an irrefutable link between action and success. And the reason why, fundamentally, is because it's because of the choices we make. Even if you think, and even if you choose to not choose, but you are still choosing. You're choosing to not choose something. And every action we take has a consequence in this life. So please, whenever you have a choice, choose action. And after all this work comes my favorite part, surrender. Eckhart Tolle said, surrender to life. Say yes to life and see how life suddenly becomes, starts working for you rather than against you. And by surrendering, I really don't mean giving up on life and I don't mean turning into a vegetable. I mean, say yes. Yes, the situation is terrible. It's not a good place to be but this is what I'm doing to make it better. And we don't say either that the situation is okay, but we just accept that it is happening with or without our will, but we move on to what we can do to make it better. And there's also the part here that I really love about surrendering is that you stop fighting against life. Life is not happening to you, life is just happening. It's what you make of it, so you stop gripping, you stop worrying, you stop really like uh, expecting things from yourself or others. And when you stop doing all of these things, you're at peace. A peace that I cannot even describe because you just let it happen the way it is supposed to happen. And then, almost naturally, almost subtly, you don't even see it coming, you transform. You build on observing, accepting, you build on action, and you've evolved so much and you have an awareness, level of awareness that is so sharp you can never go back to what you were before. And that's why I say transform, because you've transformed like a butterfly. It's not change, because change you can always revert back. Don't go after change, go after transformation. So yeah, these are the tools really that are at your disposal. They're like a Swiss army knife. You can implement them in anything, in your job, in your relationships, in anything in your life that you want to improve. And it takes a little bit of practice, it takes a little bit of a positive approach, but they're there at your disposal. So my last piece for you is get out there and make a name for yourself. And I want you to know that if you go out there, you have to get it done. Life won't give you what you want, it only gives you what you work for. My hope for you is to have dreams, big dreams, so big they shake your entire family tree. And I, ho I hope you have the growth mindset, the right mindset, unshakable so you can actually go after them. I hope you take care of your body, I hope you be kind to everyone, and I really do hope that you have a positive impact on people that will stay long, long after you leave this earth. Thank you.